This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome to Too Good To Be True, and welcome everyone to today's show. Of course, thank you to all the listeners. Are you ready for a really thought-provoking show about strange creatures? Before we start getting into the details, let's just briefly talk about psychic insight and how we apply it. We choose a subject, then research it, and based on the background information, we determine what we think needs to be explained by creating a series of questions. Then, Justina provides psychic insight to answer those questions. At that point, it is a question of individual belief. Now, let's go through the disclaimers. Here are the disclaimers. Neither of us claim to have any expertise in the subjects we discuss. We relate information we find through research and the psychic insight. We are always delighted to hear from the listeners. The show only lasts an hour. We don't have time to present exhaustive research on any topic. This means that there will be information that we do miss. We provide information as a basis for the psychic insight. For this show, we cannot share every story about each creature but we will provide an overview. We don't care if a theory turns out too good to be true, as the show name suggests. We are only interested in finding out more of the truth about topics. Spirit can only relate insight that is appropriate for our time in history. Free will cannot be affected. Only comments that are appropriate for our time can be given through the psychic insight. Much of the subject matter in shows will have already been covered again and again in other shows. We want to look into subjects in a new, different way and be thought-provoking. We are not so good with pronouncing names. We apologize for any names we mess up. Two additional disclaimers are needed for this show. Firstly, the accounts of eyewitnesses do vary depending on the source. This tends to happen, especially when urban legends are involved. Secondly, Native American beliefs are discussed. We don't claim any knowledge of those beliefs, but wish to be as respectful as possible to those who do share those beliefs. Today, we are going to discuss strange creatures that have either eyewitness reports or related to some type of legend. Hey, Justina, you chose the topic of today's show. Uh, why did you choose the subject? I chose the subject since there are so many creatures that are discussed that are debated as being real or not. I am very interested in the environment, so this relates to the planet we live on. With recent technology, it is way easier to get information and personal accounts on the creatures compared to before, where the stories were passed down from generation to generation. These two creatures do fall under the category of being a cryptid. A cryptid, according to Oxford Dictionary, and I quote, is an animal whose existence or survival is disputed or unsubstantiated, such as the Yeti. There actually is a whole pseudoscience called cryptozoology. In cryptozoology, the goal is to prove that these cryptids do exist. Cryptids can range from creatures that were spotted to new species, such as new species of different insects. According to Wikipedia, Wikipedia, sorry, cryptozoologists are usually interested in more unique, unique creatures than insects. This is a quote from Wikipedia. According to historian Mike Dash, few scientists doubt there are thousands of unknown animals particularly invertebrates, awaiting discovery. However, cryptozoologists are largely uninterested in researching and cataloging newly discovered species of ants or beetles, instead focusing their efforts towards more elusive creatures that have often defied decades of work aimed at confirming their existence. According to CurrentResults.com, about 18,000 plants and animals are newly classified every year. The article says that there are many more animals waiting to be classified, with about 4 million insects probably not have been discovered yet. However, most of the unclassified animals are either insects or aquatic creatures. 
it is claimed that almost all mammals and birds have already been classified. This means I'd be more likely to discover a new fish or insect than a new species of bird, but not completely impossible. Yet, it has been argued that all larger creatures on land have been discovered already. Yeah, let's talk about two different cryptids today, including the Mothman and the Thunderbird. Let's talk about the Mothman first. The first reports of the Mothman date back to November 12, 1966, near Clendenin, West Virginia. Five men were busy digging a grave in a cemetery when they saw something they reported as a brown human being. This creature was said to have flown from some trees and then flew over their heads. It was said that the creature did not look like a bird, but more looked like a man who had wings. This was the first sighting in the area, but not the last. The next sighting of the Mothman was on November 15th in an area called the TNT area. The TNT area is just north of Point Pleasant. During World War II, West Virginia Ordnance Works was located here, which was a manufacturing facility for trinitrotoluene, or commonly called TNT. At its peak, over 500,000 pounds of TNT was made every day. The TNT components were stored in a concrete dome called an egg glue with dirt and grass on top of them so they would be more hidden. According to Wikipedia, the land in this area is 33.68 kilometers squared or 8,323 acres. When the plant was operating during the war between 1942 and 1945, there were 3,500 employees. After the war, the land was used as a landfill, a wildlife area, an airport, an industrial park, to name a few. Let's discuss more about the Mothman and the different sightings after this break. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influenced her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Mnemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Mnemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, I was discussing the area called the TNT area. And I was mentioning that after the war, the land was actually used as a landfill, a wildlife area, an airport, and an industrial park, to name a few. However, fishermen were reported that they were in the area fishing and that they found contaminants leaking from the area into the water. That meant that the site was listed in 1983 on the National Priorities List. Today, the McClintic State Wildlife Management Area is located on 2,785 acres of the land and is used for many recreational purposes, including, including hunting. The EPA has been monitoring the area because of the groundwater and the surface water being contaminated with TNT and its byproducts 2,4-DNT and 2,6-DNT. Crystalline TNT is also buried in some spots, which has a large environmental risk. A lot of the tunnels connecting the igloos are also collapsed, which makes the area even more dangerous. According to an NPR, that's National Public Radio article, it was reported that one of the igloos containing 20,000 pounds of material exploded. No one was injured in the blast. Going back to the Mothman sightings, let's talk about the sighting in the area now that some background of the area has been covered. Two couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Stephen Mary Malate, were reported as driving past the TNT area near Point Pleasant, West Virginia. According to Prairie Ghosts, the couples reported they saw a strange creature, and I quote, The couples spotted two large eyes that were attached to something that was shaped like a man but bigger, maybe six or seven feet tall, and it had big wings folded against his back. When the creature moved towards the plant door, the couples panicked and sped away. Moments later, they saw the same creature on a hillside near the road. It spread its wings and rose into the air, falling with their car, which by now was traveling at over 100 miles per hour. That bird kept right up with us, said one of the group. They told Deputy Sheriff Milliard Halstead that they had followed them down Highway 62 and right to Point Pleasant city limits and they would not be the only ones to report that creature that night. Another group of four witnesses claimed to see the bird three different times. Yeah, other reports also say that one of the people actually spotted red eyes of the Mothman before seeing the rest of his body. Here's a quote from portalist.com. Uh, this quote includes two of the witnesses already mentioned. Steve Millett was one of those witnesses. It was like a man with wings, he recounted to the Point Pleasant Register. It wasn't anything like you'd seen on TV or in a monster movie. Another witness, Roger Scarberry, described the creature as having red eyes about two inches in diameter and six inches apart. Scarberry said if he had, been, if he had seen the creature by himself, he wouldn't have said anything, but there were four of us who saw it. At the same night at around 10.30 p.m., Newell Partridge, a building contractor, also had a strange experience. He was watching TV in Salem, Virginia, which is about 90 miles from Point Pleasant, and suddenly the TV screen went dark. From prairieghost.com, here is his account of the experience. He stated that a weird pattern filled the screen, and then he heard a loud, whining sounds from outside that raised in pitch and then ceased. 
It sounded like a generator winding up, he later said. Partridge's dog, Bandit, began to howl on the front porch, and Newell went out to see what was going on. When he walked outside, he saw Bandit facing the hay barn, about 150 yards from the house. Puzzled, Partridge turned a flashlight in the direction and spotted two red circles that looked like eyes or bicycle reflectors. The moving red orbs were certainly not animal eyes, he believed, and the sight of them frightened him. Bandit, an experienced hunting dog and protective of his territory, shot off across the yard in pursuit of the glowing eyes. Partridge called for him to stop, but the animal paid no attention. His owner turned and went back into the house for his gun, but then was too scared to go back outside again. He slept that night with his gun propped up next to the bed. The next morning, he realized that Bandit had disappeared. The dog still had not shown up two days later when Partridge read in the newspaper about the sightings in Point Pleasant that night. Sadly, there was a report in the newspaper of a sighting of the strange bird-like creature and then, sadly, a body of a dog on the side of the road. The sighting of the dog originated from witness Roger Scarberry, who we had previously mentioned. Roger and the other three were too scared to get out of the car when they saw the dog's body. They instead backed up and went into town. In town, they told Sheriff George Johnson and Deputy Millard Halstead about a strange creature. Later in the night, Roger went past the same place he had previously spotted the dog, but the dog was gone. The search t- turned up empty for any strange creatures. Bandit was never seen again. A press conference was held the next day on November 16th. The accounts of the witnesses were published in the Point Pleasant Register with the headline, Couple sees man-sized bird, creature, something. Another sighting also occurred on November 16th near the TNT plant. Mrs. Bennett reported seeing a red light that hovered and moved around the TNT plant. She drove to the Thomas house, which was near the region of the TNT plant. She got out of her car carrying her baby and spotted a figure that rose from the ground. She described the figure as gray and larger than a man with glowing eyes. She was so startled that she actually dropped her baby. Then she quickly picked her baby back up and ran into the house, locking all the doors and windows. The police were called, but there was no evidence of a creature. Other various sightings continue to occur in the area. Let's transition to one of the most famous Mothman sightings. On December the 15th, 1967, people reported seeing the Mothman perched on the Silver Bridge. The Silver Bridge connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to Galapolis, uh, Ohio, over the Ohio River. This was moments before the bridge collapsed in the middle of rush hour traffic. 46 people lost their lives in this tragic bridge collapse. The collapse was said to be because of an issue with an eye bar used in the suspension chain. According to Wikipedia, the defect in the eye bar was 0.1 of an inch or two and a half millimeters deep. Also, it's reported that the bridge was carrying a heavier load than it was designed for and may not have been properly maintained. There were two theories about the Moffman sightings reported before the collapse. Either the Moffman was responsible or it was trying to warn people before the collapse. We cannot discuss the Mothman with, without discussing John Keel, the author of the Mothman Prophecies. He was also a journalist and UFOologist. John Keel authored the book according to his investigation into the sightings of the Mothman. He combined these sightings with different theories, including theories about UFOs. He also is known to have discussed the event at Silver Bridge with the sightings of the Mothman. We don't have time to discuss his entire book or to summarize his extensive research. He brought the Mothman more to the public spotlight with his various studies. Yeah, relating to bringing the attention of the public to the Mothman accounts, in 2002, the Mothman Prophecies movie came out. This movie was based off Keel's book from 1975. The movie does claim to be based on actual events that occurred in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. The movie also included the bridge collapse and puts all the events into a more dramatic account of the sightings. Another important person related to the Mothman is Mary Heyer. She was a reporter for the newspaper, the Athens Messengers, and was located downtown in Point Pleasant. She was known as reporting on the Mothman sightings in her column, Mary Heyer and John Keel became close friends, and they studied the sightings together. She was known to be one of the main people investigating, and this caused some attention to be brought on her. 
Yeah, Mary Har was known to be visited by strange people who some called uh, the men in black. It was said that they visited her, visited her office quite often. She was visited by a strange man in January of 1967. He was short and had thick glasses. He was asking for directions and Mary reported that the man kept getting closer and closer to her. She asked the circulation manager to come to her office and notice the man grab a pen off her desk. The man then grabbed the pen and ran out of the building. She saw the man again weeks later and when he noticed her, he ran off into a car and drove away. These were only two of the strange incidents Mary experienced while reporting on the events in Point Pleasant. It's time to discuss the description of what people actually think the Mothman looks like. The Mothman is described as walking on two legs and having wings and being humanoid. The reports of his color range from black to gray to brown, but it's always a darker color. Most sightings have reported him as seven feet tall, but some other reports say he is as short as four to five feet tall. His wingspan has been reported to be 10 to 15 feet or longer. His eyes are reported as glowing or looking like red lights. After encountering the Mothman, people have reported having fear or psychological issues, including anxiety and paranoia. People generally do not report the Mothman as being something good, but instead describe him out of a nightmare or evil. He has also been reported to being able to fold his wings and walk in a waddle. He is said to fly way faster than any bird could and has chased many cars. No credible photographic evidence has ever been recovered. There also has been no physical evidence. The only evidence that supports the existence is the numerous eyewitness reports of seeing the Mothman. Yeah, on a lighter note, Point Pleasant actually celebrates the idea of the Mothman. They celebrate once a year in a festival in September called the Mothman Festival. There's also a statue in the middle of the town of the Mothman. They've also created a Mothman museum for people to visit. The, this museum includes props in the movie and includes documents from eyewitness testimonies. Press clippings, photographs of the Silver Bridge and historical figures are all featured in the museum according to their website. Some theories have been mentioned to be an explanation of the creature called the Mothman. One theory is that the creature was a sandhill crane, which is not native to the area but it was suggested it could have migrated south from Canada to the area. Some of the sightings were stated to have been owls, which John Keel even agreed with for some of the claims. Another theory is the cornstalk curse. Uh, this was an alleged curse that was put on the land two centuries before the sightings began. Cornstalk was a leader of the Shawnee Nation right before the American Revolution. He was an advocate for peace, but was murdered by militiamen. According to Wikipedia, a local legend claims that he, Cornstalk, took his revenge in the 1960s by sending the mysterious Mothman to terrorize Point Pleasant. Legends arose about his dying curse being the cause of the misfortunes in the area, later supplanted by local Mothman stories, though no contemporary historical source mentions any utterance by Cornstalk. Others claim that the Mothman is related to UFOs and sightings of UFOs in the area. This is combined with theories of poltergeists, weird lights in the area, or even a portal to an alternate realm or dimension. Other ar others argue that Mothman is actually good and is actually warning people in the area. But why did the Mothman supposedly harm a dog or chase after people? One other theory is by Harold Hutchison in his article, uh, UFO, UFO Mystery Solved, Mothman were actually Green Berets. The article suggests that special forces near Point Pleasant were testing HALO, which is high altitude, low opening parachuting for use in Vietnam. There were claims that they had been using luminous paint to be seen. Or could the TNT and its byproducts in the area be responsible for this creature? Could the Mothman be created, be a creature mutated by chemicals? Before we switch into the next subject of the creature, the Thunderbird, I just want to add here that for future shows, people can email us suggestions. So any listeners out there can go to xzbn.net and email us there and also find time to listen to us. And we would love to hear from people about weird creatures or any topic that they want to hear in the future. And we'll continue with the Thunderbird and different sightings of the Thunderbird after the break. Hi. 
Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, Soul Balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A Soul Balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we were discussing the Mothman. But let's switch subjects and do a second creature, the Thunderbird. Some people even suggest that the creatures are actually related in a way. 
Dad, you suggested finding out more about the Thunderbird. Why was that? Because I've heard it mentioned several times and wondered about it. I also think that the Thunderbird at the top of a totem pole looks really neat and is incredible art. The bird's head looks like an eagle. The wings are typically large and spread out. Totems are fascinating, and I think we could have learned a lot from Native American spirituality. Animal, animal symbolism is at the heart of Native American culture, apparently. The Thunderbird as a spirit guide is sometimes thought of as, of as being a courier from another realm. Some sources state that it is universally symbolic of profound power and glory, transformation and indisputable authority. Also, the Thunderbird also symbolizes creation and destruction, dividing the heavens from the earth. Because there are different Native American tribes, there are different beliefs about the Thunderbird. So it isn't really a creature like the Mothman has been described. You call the Thunderbird a spirit guide, but Wikipedia calls it a supernatural legendary creature. I thought spirit guides were assigned to people rather than being powerful spirit that symbolizes creation and destruction and is a courier from another realm. A courier means a messenger of some sort, doesn't it? So I think that supernatural legendary creature that brings messages is probably a better way of perceiving the Thunderbird. With the Thunderbird understood differently by different tribes, let's start with the um, Algonquian, and I apologize for my mispronunciation, the Algonquian speaking Native Americans. Originally, the Algonquian peoples populated the Atlantic coast and along the interior along the St. Lawrence River and around the Great Lakes. In Algonquian mythology, the Thunderbird controls the upper world. The underworld is controlled by the underwater panther or great horned serpent. The Thunderbird throws lightning at the underwater creatures and creates thunder by flapping its wings. What other traditions are there? It seems that the Thunderbird symbolizes different things to different people. I think we still need to figure out whether it is a spirit or supernatural creature and what its purpose is. Yeah, um, Men Omini, Ojibwe, and Winnebago are, are the other peoples that talk about the Thunderbird. Mononomy, meaning wild rice people, now live in northern Wisconsin, but used to cover a wider area. The Mononomy tell of a great mountain that floats in the western sky in which dwell the Thunderbirds. They control the rain and hell and delight in fighting and deeds of greatness. They are the enemies of the great horned snakes, the Misik in Ubik. Thunderbirds have prevented the great horned snakes from overrunning the earth and devouring mankind. Thunderbirds are described as messengers of the great sun himself. Who is the great sun? I think the great sun is like the great spirit. Some people believe that the great spirit is like what most people call God, who is responsible for all of creation. The great spirit is said to guide but also teach lessons. The great spirit also has prophets and those these prophets also have their own stories. There wasn't much information regarding the great sun actually being in the great spirit, but this is what I've inferred. The hardest part about a topic is that there are so many different beliefs and stories. Let's talk about the beliefs of the Ojibwe. They believe Thunderbirds were created by Nan Ab Ozo for the purpose of fighting the underwater spirits. Before you ask, Nan Ab Bozoho is a spirit in Ojibwe storytelling. Thunderbirds were also used to punish humans who broke moral rules. The Thunderbirds lived in the four directions and arrived with the other birds in the springtime. In the fall, they migrated south after the ending of the underwater spirit's most dangerous season. You mentioned the Winnebago. What are those, their beliefs? Apparently, Winneb the Winnebago tradition is that a man who has a vision of a Thunderbird during a solitary fast will become a war chief. Are there also modern sightings of the Thunderbirds? Yes, on CryptoChroniclesTumblr.com, there are several various accounts from the 21st century. I'm going to, to quote from that source. In 2002, a sighting of a large bird-like creature with a wingspan around 14 feet, which is 4.3 meters, was reported in Alaska. The Anchorage Daily News reported witnesses describing the creature like something out of a, the movie Jurassic Park. Scientists suggest that the giant bird may have simply been a stellar sea eagle, which have a wingspan of 6 to 8 feet, which is about 1.8 to 2.4 meters. 
There had also been previous reports of similar creatures in the same area around that time. As recently as 2007, sightings have been claimed in the area around San Antonio, Texas. Are there any sightings from the 20th century? Yes, I'm going to quote from the same source. Um, The Lauren referred to in this rather long quote is a male, and it's spelled L-O-R-E-N. Bigfoot researcher and cryptozoology author Lauren Coleman wrote about a series of Thunderbird sightings in the 1940s. On April 10, 1948, three individuals in Overland, Illinois, spotted what they originally thought to be a passing plane. But after seeing a large set of flapping wings, they realized this plane was something very different. A few weeks later in Alton, Illinois, a man and his son saw what they described as an enormous bird creature with a body shaped like a naval torpedo. The creature was flying at least 500 feet high and cost, and cast a shadow the same size as a small passenger airplane. Similar sightings ran at a time in St. Louis, Missouri, prompted residents to write concerns, le- concerned letters to the then St. Louis Mayor Alois P. Kaufman, demanding that the city do something about these reportedly huge birds. The mayor instructed an administrative assistant to set a trap to catch one of the creatures, But when blue heron tracks were discovered on an island in the Merrimack River, the mystery was considered solved. There was a spike in Thunderbird sightings in the late 20th century. On occasion, such reports were accompanied by large footprints or by other purported evidence. Among the most controversial reports is July 25, 1977 account from Lawndale, Illinois, About 9 p.m., a group of three boys were at play in a residential backyard. Two large birds appeared and chased the boys. Two escaped unharmed, but the third boy, 10-year-old Marlon Lowe, did not. One of the birds reportedly clamped his shoulder with with its claws and then lifted Lowe about two feet off the ground, carrying him some distance. Lowe fought against the bird, which released him. Viewed viewed by some as a tall tale, the description given by the witnesses of these birds matched that of an Andean condor, a large black bird with with a white ring neck and a wingspan of up to 10 feet, which is about 3 metres. However, an Andean condor's talons are not strong enough to lift heavy objects. Lauren Coleman and his brother Jerry interviewed several witnesses after the reported event. The sightings don't seem consistent with Thunderbirds having a higher purpose. Claims of modern Thunderbird sightings are not generally supported by Native American stories. A Thunderbird may not have physical form. If no physical form, this would suggest a spirit guide rather than a supernatural creature. What about the monster at, of Elizabeth Lake in California? The last reports of the monster's appearance were in the late 1800s, when several men claimed they witnessed the ascension of a huge monster with bat-like wings from the lake. That sounds more like a bat-like monster than a thunderbird and certainly not a spiritual creature. I think it's time for the psychic insight and we'll take the Mothman first and then move on to the thunderbird. So I'll start the questioning now. Does the Mothman exist? Yes. Where did the Mothman come from? The Mothman is basically an undiscovered creature. And the Mothman has been on this planet as a species long before human species were here. Is the Mothman an extraterrestrial life form? Originally, the Mothman did come from somewhere else. Is the Mothman a mutation from the TNT area? No, but the Mothman does enjoy the area. Is the Mothman actually a sandhill crane? No. Is the Mothman actually an owl? No. Did the cornstalk curse bring the Mothman to the area? No. What does the Mothman look like? So the Mothman does kind of look like a mutated human that has wings. You can think of it kind of looking like a pterodactyl from the dinosaur ages, but was here before the dinosaurs existed. You could say that it is a cross between a human and a bird, and you could say it is more intelligent than most birds are. Are there more than one of these creatures? Yes. Currently, the population is very small. Let's say their diet is very specific. So basically, there are only a few that exist, less than 20 in total. What did the gravediggers see that night 
that they were digging that um, something flew over them. They saw this creature, the Mothman. What did the two couples see near the TNT area? They also saw the Mothman. Why did the creature follow them in their car? The creature was curious of the vehicle and why they were in the area. It was not trying to harm them, but instead was just curious. How fast can the Mothman fly? A couple hundred miles per hour. Can the Mothman affect technology like the TV in or the television in your Partridge's house? The Mothman can do many different things, but the stigma is bad, which is not true. What was outside the house? Outside the house was one of these creatures. Was the body of the dog the body of Bandit? Yes. What happened to Bandit? Bandit ran off and was injured, and the body was placed in the middle of the road to be discovered. But later, it was taken away by a different type of animal, so the Mothman did not hurt the dog. What did Mrs. Bennett see when she was near her car? She did see one of these creatures again that was curious what was going on and curious about the baby. What happened at the Silver Bridge? The Mothman was actually trying to warn people about the bridge collapse and draw attention to the bridge so people would get off of it. Was the bridge actually faulty? Yes. Was the creature people reported seeing before they collapsed the Mothman? That was again one of those Mothman creatures, so yes. How many of John Keel's research sightings were real? A great number of them were real, and since there are more than one, they were not all the same creature. That's why the skin and different features are sometimes different. Was it the man in black who visited Mary Hire? Yes. Is the Mothman a creature from a, a different dimension? Yes and no. You can say the creature is not from Earth, but a different place originally. The creature has different abilities, such as interfering with technology, but we cannot say exactly where the creature comes from. Were some of the sightings parachutes? No. Why did the muffins? Why why the muffin? Um, why is the muffin seen a lot in the same area, the TNT area? Because a lot of that area is abandoned, and there is a lot of wildlife, and basically it is not an industrial place, so the mothmen can survive, since they have enough space to roam, and also live and eat without too much interference with humans. Okay, we're about to talk more about the uh, the Thunderbird and ask the questions, but I think we're coming up to a break, Justina. Yes, let's discuss the Thunderbird and the questions related to the Thunderbird after this break. And then let's discuss a little bit about the Psychic Insight and our reactions to all this information. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213 213- 
401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? Why are crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we were asking some questions about the Mothman and having Psychic Insight answer these questions. Now it's time to ask some questions about the Thunderbird and get some Psychic Insight into the Thunderbird. Okay, I'll start asking questions about the Thunderbird. Does the Thunderbird exist? Yes. Is the Thunderbird a spirit guide? It is a type of spirit, yes. Is the Thunderbird a messenger from another realm? Yes and no. Not really another realm, but you could say a different place. If so, what is the message? It depends on which people the Thunderbird is actually talking to. Can you tell me more? Basically, there are different spirits that visit, obviously, such as spirit guides who can visit. There are also different spirits other than spirit guides who can also visit. Basically, the Native Americans are very spiritual, and in their quest to be more spiritual and increase their different vibrational frequencies in spirituality, the spirit actually feels comfortable coming to visit them. Is the Thunderbird a supernatural creature? No. Is the Thunderbird universally symbolic of profound power and glory, transformation and indisputable authority? Not exactly, no. As a spirit, it does not have much authority, but instead provides messages. 
does the thunderbird symbolize creation and destruction, dividing the heavens from the earth? Again, not exactly. This could be one of the messages that is interpreted, but no. Does the thunderbird control the upper world? No. Does the thunderbird create thunder by flapping its wings? So, since it is a spirit and does have energy, the thunderbird could do this, but not always. Does the thunderbird control the rain and the hail? Not all weather, no. Does the thunderbird prevent the great horned snakes from overrunning the earth and devouring mankind? No. Who is the great sun? So, you can think of the great sun as another spirit that basically you can say that is energy, just like the thunderbird is. Did the thunderbird use to punish humans who broke moral rules? No. Do thunderbirds fight underwater spirits? They do try to bring positivity and more, you could say, more protection to the people, but they do not directly fight the underwater spirits. Does a man who has a vision of a thunderbird during a solitary fast become a war chief? So this goes back to spirituality and increasing their connection to the spirit. So yes, the person could become a war chief if they so do decide. Was there a sighting of a thunderbird in Anchorage, Alaska in 2002? Yes. Were there sightings of a, the thunderbird around San Antonio, Texas as recently as 2007? Yes. Was there a sighting of a thunderbird in Illinois in 1948? Yes. Were there sightings of a thunderbird in St. Louis, Missouri around the same time? Yes. Was there a sighting of a thunderbird in Lawndale, Illinois in 1977? Yes. Did the thunderbird actually attack the boys in Lawndale, Illinois? No. Was the monster of Elizabeth Lake in California seen in the late 1800s a thunderbird? No. What was the, what was the monster in the Elizabeth Lake? That was, you could say, a creature from a very long time ago. So that was a creature, something physical in this world? Correct. You can think of it as a giant fish. What message does the thunderbird have for mankind today? So basically, as you stated, the Thunderbird is related to higher spirituality. So when there is higher spirituality, the different spirits come around. So obviously, different people who see them and experience these experiences actually name them different things. So you can think of them kind of bringing their own messages. And yes, the Thunderbird is related to basically weather and flying and that type of things. It is hard to describe exactly since the spirits are energy, but in a way you can think of it almost as a ghost coming back and visiting since it is energy and this energy is coming back to visit. There is nothing scary and nothing bad. What can we learn from Native American culture? To embrace the different visions and experiences that they have instead of just discrediting everything right away. There's only one Thunderbird, correct? Yes, one Thunderbird. Can the Thunderbird manifest itself in a physical form to be seen like in the sightings? So, it is not really manifesting itself, but more, you could say, being an apparition. So the Thunderbird looks like it has a physical form, but again, it is not an energy or a spirit. Since the sightings were said to be real, why did these why did these specific people see the thunderbird so in some cases it's just because the energy was present so it was nothing they were doing in other cases it was because they were supposed to see the thunderbird for different various reasons the thunderbird brings messages to different people what is an example of a message from the thunderbird more related to the native americans the thunderbird would bring a message about the weather or the crops that would benefit them. So there would be a message about the weather or the crops or something that is positive to help them out. That is one specific message the Thunderbird may bring. Are there more mammals or birds that are still to be discovered that are alive today? 
Yes, there are a few, and there are many ancient ones that haven't been discovered since their fossils are hard to find. So in the upcoming years, if there is more time and effort put into discovering animals, many surprising things will come. Okay, I have to ask the question. Is the explanation that Mothman are kind-hearted, kind-hearted physical creatures living on Earth too good to be true? That depends on what you are prepared to believe. Is the explanation that the Thunderbird is a kindly spirit that can appear in apparition too good to be true? Again, that depends on what you are prepared to believe. We have discussed what can be believed to be a physical freak creature and what can be believed to be a spirit that can appear like a ghost, but what do they have in common? The common theme is that both entities are harmless and wish to help mankind. Both are acting sort of as messengers. I guess we'll fear what we don't really understand. Uh, what, were, what were your thoughts on the Mothman? Well, my first initial thought was that I was shocked because I've actually watched the Mothman movie with you, Dad, and I thought it was just something that, you know, someone thought of one day that this giant moth exists or this giant Mothman exists. But I'm also very happy that the Mothman did not kill the dog and does not eat dogs. And I was also struck by the different eyewitness testimony. A lot of it seemed to be very believable, and a lot of these people were very credible witnesses. And I was surprised by the number of different eyewitness reports that are out there. And we didn't get time to cover all of them, but there's actually a website where people can submit their eyewitness reports of the Mothman. And they're trying to put together all the recent sightings, too. And I also hadn't heard about the TNT area before. And that was interesting to hear about the environment and how this area is actually being researched and hopefully cleaned up in the future because of the ex-TNT plant there. Yeah, um, I have to confess, I don't remember seeing the movie The Mothman. I must have uh, nodded <laughs> off. But anyhow, uh, going back to uh, The Thunderbird, I, I'm absolutely uh, delighted that uh, the Psychic Insight concluded that The Thunderbird is a helpful spirit. I just love the pictures or the carvings on the totem poles. Uh, I'd really have been disappointed if The, uh, if the Thunderbird had been something else. Um, and uh, I guess you can continue with your thoughts, Justine. Well, uh, my other thought, too, is especially when researching it, is that there's so many undiscovered different animals and plants, and the numbers are very, very large, especially about aquatic creatures in the ocean. But I also like the idea that there may be birds and animals that have not been identified or, and are yet to be discovered. So we always think that everything has been discovered since people live almost everywhere. But maybe there's these creatures that are really good at hiding from humans and there's only a few eyewitness reports. Yeah, well, that leads into what I have to mention. That's the Loch Ness Monster. Um, many years ago, my dad's cousin claimed he actually saw it. But that was after dark and after uh, too many whiskeys. So um, I don't think at the time we could even see the lock. But anyway, uh, that's one report. I think that Nessie should be left in peace for now. Although I actually read something and watched something that the entire lock was used with underwater sonar and they haven't found anything yet. Yeah, I'd, I'd, like, I'd love to hear some listener suggestions for topics, including Nessie. Um, I, but I think we should only discuss Nessie if it's or uh, it's or he or she are spe specifically asked for. What do you think, Justina? Yeah, I think what we might think is interesting to listeners may not be. You seem to be stuck on ancient monuments and advanced ancient civilizations because you don't think human history as taught makes too much sense. Yeah, that's true. But today I wasn't sure about discussing the Mothman in the first place. I'd forgot seeing the movie and... Um, uh, I expected the whole subject to be about people's vivid imaginations. And uh, as, a, as, uh, as we got into it, it became fascinating. Um, so there we are. Yeah, we have a lot of fun putting together the shows and we get very surprised about it. The psychic insight seems to collect, connect a lot of the dots and make sense of some of the evidence. And the available topics to ask questions seem endless. So again, any listeners out there, if they you want to submit a topic, go to xzbn.net and our emails are on there. And just email us a suggestion and any comments you have for today's show. And of course, I want to thank all the listeners for listening today. <laughs>